President Trump took to his favorite medium this weekend to conduct a bit of diplomacy. In a tweet on Sunday, the president promised to devastate Turkey economically if they hit the Kurds. A little context here, the Kurds are afraid they're going to be attacked once the U.S. pulls out of Syria, and the Kurds are America's strongest ally against ISIS, but Turkey considers them terrorists. Like other tweets that send the president's aides scrambling, Mike Pompeo, the man who's supposed to be selling the president's diplomatic agenda, didn't seem to know much about the president's plans for Turkey. When asked by a reporter, Pompeo said, quote, you'd have to ask, you'd have to ask him. I, we've applied sanctions in many places around the world. I assume he's speaking about those kinds of things, but you'd have to ask him. Well, maybe our next guest has a better idea, Joel Rubin. He's a former assistant deputy secretary of state and the president of the Washington Strategy Group. You are a diplomat. Tell us, how difficult does a diplomat's job get when the boss keeps changing his mind? Shana, there's no diplomacy if there's no direction. And uh, we need to have a, a country that is governed with a clear thinking and strategy. And, and what we've seen in the last couple of weeks about our Syria policies that there is no real clear direction. And the result is what you just described, where uh, we are having one-off conflicts with allies like Turkey, uh, spats about Iran, uh, making Israel nervous. All of this is the fallout of having no clear strategy. And it's very hard for our diplomats to execute when they don't know what they're supposed to execute about. Well, some of the direction is coming from Twitter, as we saw that latest tweet of the president threatening Turkey. What are the consequences of making foreign policy by social media? The, the way the State Department works is that there's a, a chain of command, just like in the military. When the secretary of state gets a directive from the president, from the White House, in, in this case with Turkey, what he would then do, he or she would then do, is tell their deputies, make sure that our ambassador communicates this. Make sure that we get that. Uh, when the president does it independently, however, as he's doing with Twitter, there's no follow-up. There's no ability for our people who are actually daily responsible for this relationship to uh, do any uh, action that gets to where the president wants to go. They're always playing catch-up. They're learning as uh, at the same time as the Turks, rather than proactively shaping the discussions with the Turks in this case or with anyone else. So you don't really have a, a mechanism then being utilized to get what the president wants. That's the ultimate danger in this kind of approach. That's such a good point because the president argues, look, I can just pick up the phone and make decisions with other world leaders, but there's no real follow up if the people under him cannot actually talk to the leader's aides and continue the conversation and make sure things are actually getting done. I want to shift focus for a moment. There was a, an article this weekend by The Washington Post that basically claimed that the president doesn't want any notes made up of his conversations with Putin. Why is that so concerning? Well, even to take it on, on the most benign level where there's nothing nefarious happening, this goes to what we were just discussing. It's sort of a, a, a diplomacy management 101. Uh, you need to ensure, one needs to ensure that what the president communicates with a foreign leader is shared with all of those parts of the United States government that have responsibility for that relationship. The Defense Department, the intelligence community, the State Department, Treasury, you name it. When it comes to Russia, it's a big portfolio. And if the president, the commander in chief, is not telling the government what it is that he discussed, then there's really no follow up. Then there's really no policy that can be implemented. Now, on the darker side, the more nefarious side, perhaps the president was engaging with Vladimir Putin on issues that he doesn't want the government to know about. And these are issues related to the Mueller investigation. That's the big concern. So in either direction, it's not a good situation and it doesn't help advance America's priorities. But Joel, what about the argument that, look, everything the president touches is leaked. These are sensitive conversations and he just doesn't want it to end up on the front page of The New York Times. Well, he, he can have that concern, but that's his concern that he needs to remedy. Uh, not every president of the United States has had the leaking problem that this president has had. He has to fix that in-house, but he can't 
undermine the ability of the U.S. government to do its job on Russia because he's worried that he doesn't have control of his own staff. That's something he needs to fix, but he works for all of the American people and, and really needs to ensure that all of the American government is doing their job effectively. Yeah. All right, Joel Rubin, that's why we have you on. Thanks for joining us.